Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to go over the rotary encoder hooked up to an Arduino Nano. I'm going to show you how not only how to use it without a library, but how to get rid of some errors that might pop up on it by using an asynchronous delay. I'm going to start with a very basic sketch. I've pared down my normal Nexion display one I've gotten rid of all that because in this one I'm not going to use the Nexion display. I'm having some issues with the timing, so hopefully that'll be an upcoming video. But for right now, we're just going to hook it up to the Arduino. And I have an asynchronous delay, and up here I have it set. The highest value it can be is this number out here, and hopefully we won't reach that because down here in the delay, I don't look for that. I don't do any error correction. So if this were to, were to time out or go all the way up to this value, it would reset to zero, and I'm not checking for that down there. If you look at any of my past videos, you can probably find a video that has that in it. So all I'm doing is every 500 milliseconds, flip the value of pin 13, which is the onboard LED. So every 500 milliseconds, we're going to go from on to off and then off to on. I'm going to start by bringing up a diagram of the encoder itself and how it works. And we have two signals that come out of the encoder. There is a switch too, but for the encoding portion or the turning of it counterclockwise and clockwise, we have two signals. We have A and we have B. Sometimes it's labeled CLK for clock. In our case, it's, it's DT. There's different labelings, but for the most part, it's A and B. I've decided to just label this with arrows instead of counterclockwise and clockwise because different ones operate differently. I found that in my time using these, and if I get it backwards, I just switch it around and it works okay. So we'll just say when we're turning the knob one way and then over on this side when we're turning it the other way. And what we're looking at is when A changes state. So we're just looking at that input. And then when, when it's not what it was, every time we go through the loop, in other words, it's gone from a high to a low, we want to look at B and see if they're the same values or if the opposite values. And if you're going one direction, they'll be the opposite values. And if you're going the other direction, they'll be the same values, because you can see when A changes state, they're the same. They're both low. And the next time A changes state, they're both high. Well, going the other direction, when A changes state, they're the opposite. And when it changes state again, it's the opposite. And so you just look for that value. So the first thing we're going to look for is, is whatever pin we have designated as A. And when it makes a change, then we're going to look at B. And then we'll compare the two. And if they match, then it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. And if, the, if they don't match, it's going the opposite direction. So I have a certain set of um, variables that I use for this. And I use A for the past and A for the present, because we're going to collect the value of A every time we loop through the circuit. And then we want to compare it to what it was so we know whether, to, whether it's moved or not. And then we'll, we'll collect B at the same time. Sometimes people don't collect B. They just compare it against the reading of B. But I like to collect it instantly every time through the loop. That way, if there's a timing issue, I have the value, and then I can just compare it with that. And then I have this SW, which I use for the switch. One of the other features of the rotary encoder is if you press it, there's a little switch, too. So we're going to collect that information also. And now we have to go into the setup and add the outputs and inputs in there. And in the setup, we're going to have three inputs. We're going to have A, B, and the switch. And they'll be 5, 6, and 7. And then I've set up pin 10 to be an output. And I've got an LED on it. And that's just so we can tell if we press the switch. And that's really all there is to the initial configuration. Now we just have to check the inputs and outputs and execute on them. Now down here in the loop, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to read that switch. And we're just going to write to the output of 10, which we set up up here as an output, whatever we read on input 7, which will have it connected to our switch. And the reason that I left this delay in there is we're going to use it later on. But instead of putting the word delay, I wanted to do it asynchronously. That way, it, when it's not executing this if statement, it's looping through this as fast as the Arduino can. I'm going to add the delay after we upload this, and I show you the way it works like this, just so you can see the difference. I have this Arduino Nano set up, and here's my encoder over here. 
and this is the LED. It's real bright right now. It's on. It actually works the opposite way that I thought it would, so I might invert that on the next time. But the light is on when the switch is up, and it's going to go off when I press it. And then you can see the onboard LED flashing every 50, every 500 microseconds or milliseconds. You can see it's off when I push it. And you can see because of the asynchronous delay, the LED keeps flashing and I'm able to hit this as fast as I can. I'm going to invert this read here so that way the light will be off most of the time and only on when I press it. That should make it look a little bit better on the video. And If I had to delay down here equal to the delay that this is right here, We'll see how it behaves. And you can see that when I push it, it doesn't act quite the same. It takes a while for it to kick on. And that's because this delay written like this causes everything to stop, whereas the asynchronous just executes every 500 milliseconds, but the loop continues to execute over and over and over and over. Our next step is to read the pins, this A and B. So we're going to set A present equal to, and we're going to digitally read pin 5, and then B we're going to digitally read pin 6. Now, we really don't need to read B if A hasn't changed, but I just like to do it instantly at the same time. That way if any time has gone by and for some reason it's really fast, like you're spinning the wheel quickly or the encoder quickly, you can get some errors if you wait to read it later. So I just read them back to back. And then I want to check and see if A present is not equal to A past. Up at the top we set A past equal to 0. So the first time A present is equal to 1, it's going to execute this if loop. And then in this if loop, if A present is equal, equal to B, which means they're the same, then that means that it's spinning a certain direction. And if it's not equal to that, then it's spinning the opposite direction. So we're going to print clockwise and we're going to print counterclockwise. And I think I have that right. <laughs> Can't exactly remember. And then when we're all done, we need to set a past equal to a present. So that way the next time through here, we'll be looking for a different value or for the opposite change. So the first time it goes through, it's going to a present will execute when it's equal to 1. And then the next time through, it'll be equal to 0. And then it'll just toggle back and forth. It's interesting that it read out clockwise without me touching anything. But you can see I have the camera set up on it and then I have the serial monitor. So as I adjust the knob, it should read out clockwise and counterclockwise. Counterclockwise and then clockwise. So it's working just like we thought. And if I push it, it still comes on. But you can see when I go counterclockwise, every once in a while you get an error where it reads it going the wrong way. In our next step we're going to look at fixing that. And it's probably just your hand moving the opposite way, or it could be just that you're spinning it so fast that it skips something. And there could be lots of reasons for that, but like I said, we're going to look in a way to fix that. In order to do this, we're going to go back up to this rotary encoder variables up here, and we're going to add one. We're going to call it rotary encoder state, and we're going to initially set it equal to zero, and we're going to use the idea that when it's equal to zero it's ready to go either way counterclockwise or clockwise. When it's set to one though it's only going to go clockwise and when it's set to two it's only going to go counterclockwise. And hopefully it'll make sense when I show you the code down below. But so just understand we have a an RE state and we have three states that it can be in. Where it's ready to turn anyway, where it's kind of locked into clockwise or where it's kind of locked into counterclockwise. Now down here in the loop, we're going to change our if statements down here. Originally I could have left this just else. So if 
A is equal equal to B, print clockwise, and then else it could have printed counterclockwise because it's either going to be equal to B or it's not going to be equal to B. But I put this if in there because I knew I was going to be adding to this um, if statement later. So in the first one, if A present is equal to B, we're going to just add an AND statement to that. And the rotary encoder state is equal to 1 or equal to 0. So if it's equal to 1 or if it's in any state, we want to go ahead and print the clockwise. And the next line, else if A present is not equal to B and it's in one of these two states, either counterclockwise, which is the rotary encoder state is equal to 2, or it's equal to 0. So this way, it really shouldn't affect anything right now because we're not changing the rotary encoder state and it's set to 0. So I'm going to upload this and just make sure that it doesn't really do anything because it's always going to be equal to 0 or 1 and 0 or 2 because, like I said, we're not changing the rotary encoder state. I'm not going to bring up the camera. I'm going to rotate it here. This is clockwise, and you can still see we had that little glitch there. And this is counterclockwise, and we have the glitches there too. But it's still functioning. But here's where it gets a little tricky. So in this if statement right here, we're going to set the rotary encoder state. And we're going to set it equal to 1. So once we've spun it clockwise, we're going to print clockwise and we're going to set it equal to 1. So this way, if we were to spin it backwards the other way, it's not going to work because it has to be equal to 2 or 0 in order to work. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Only we're going to set it equal to 2 instead of 1. So that way when we start spinning it one way, it'll be locked. You won't be able to spin it the other way. But then what we want to do is if you stop spinning it, if, if you're not rotating it counterclockwise or clockwise, we want to reset that RE state back to zero. So this is where this asynchronous delay is going to execute every 500 milliseconds. So we can just simply go down into here and set it back equal to zero. But this is going to execute every 500 milliseconds independent of what we do here in these top in this F statement. So we want to have a little bit more control over it. And this is going to execute if async delay plus the delay length is greater than the current milliseconds or if it's counted up to 500 milliseconds beyond this async delay. So if we if we were to set our async delay if we set this async delay equal to milliseconds, then we know that this async delay down here isn't going to execute until 500 milliseconds has gone by since we last rotated the knob. So we also have to add this down here. So now we know when we rotate it clockwise, we're not going to be able to rotate it counterclockwise until we've stopped rotating it for 500 milliseconds. And the same thing the other way. So now we just have to see if it actually works. Now as you can see I'm not getting any sort of bad feedback. And when I go counterclockwise it's very smooth. The only thing that's kind of interesting is if you watch my fingers and the display I'll turn it clockwise and then when I start going back there's a little bit of a delay between when it changes. So now you can just tweak your asynchronous delay. If we take our, if we go up to here and we change our delay length to 50 milliseconds, you can see that the, that our onboard LED is flashing based upon that asynchronous delay, so it's flashing really fast. Let's see if our button still works. Works just fine. And now we'll see if we get the same thing. And we do. But it can respond quicker. And then you don't get those, um, those errors that you would get.
And of course, your application will dictate what you can and can't do as far as your timing, because if you need it to change quickly, you may have to change that. And also, if you set that asynchronous delay way low, you might have problems with that too, because it may have the same effect as not having it in there at all. So just for a quick review, we have this asynchronous delay set to run, and it's down here. So if milliseconds is greater than the asynchronous delay plus delay length, and our async delay is just set to the current millisecond, so it's just pretty much the delay length, we're going to reset this state to zero. As far as the encoder itself, we just check to see if one of the pins has changed its state, pin A, and if it has, then we know that we've turned it. And then we just compare it to the other input, B, and then based upon that we can tell which direction it's going. And then just so we don't have any false positives or we don't accidentally turn it the wrong way, we just added this RE state here, and 1 means one direction and 2 is the opposite direction. This is a little more simple video, but I've wanted to do one on different components and how they hook up. And like I said, I also want to try and hook the rotary encoder directly up to the Nexion display and use its inputs and outputs for it. But I'm having some problems because I have to read that A pin at a fairly fast rate, and the Nexion so far hasn't been able to do that. So hopefully in the next video or one of these upcoming ones, you'll see me figure out how to get around that. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.